I think I need to wrap my head around the fact that the news cycle in Canada may never slow down. It feels like we're just on this constant incline of either tensions happening here in Canada or global tensions or just national disasters happening and it's insane. Like I, I, I'm so surprised that every single week there's not only this much to talk about, but things are getting this much more insane. And politically speaking, we're still 14 or 15 months away from an election. So it, it's crazy how all this is happening so quickly. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I do want to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It does really help grow the channel. We're going to be talking about quite a few things. You've got parts of Ontario that are flooding. You have people cutting off Ukraine from any sort of funding, which is quite interesting. You have pooping on beaches, but more importantly, monkeypox and what that's going to look like in terms of shutting things down, which it seems like there's unconfirmed reports, but it seems like that's actually going to happen. So buckle up. I hope you're ready for this video and I hope you can stick around for the full thing or as much as possible. And let's just jump into it. So the polls are showing that the Conservatives, Pierre Polyev, is still still sitting at 214 projected seats with a bottom line of 181 and a top end of 234. And then you have Justin Trudeau sitting at 70 seats, which isn't that good. And then NDP, of course, at 20 seats, which, I mean, it's not that good for them. It's good for us, assuming that all of us that are watching are uh, on Team Pierre and uh, going to vote blue for Conservatives. Pierre has 99% likely for winning the most seats and a winning majority government. So all that is looking fantastic. Uh, and <laughs> to add to that, I mean, Justin Trudeau also just appointed, appointed, handpicked another Senate member, which is unbelievable. You'd think that it would have stopped, especially since uh, not too long ago he said that we shouldn't be doing that, but... Yeah, he's he's done it again. So chances are that in you know in the coming weeks that as well is gonna tank his poll numbers down even further. But we're gonna be talking about that later on in this video. Don't you worry. We're gonna start off with some international news, things that are happening outside of Canada, and then we're gonna segue into things that are happening in Canada. So in international news, you have a Texas military base that had shots fired at them. A bunch of people driving up in a black sedan went up to the base, shot at the military base in Texas, the U.S. Air Force Base, and then seemed to have retreated. And there's not any conclusive data that would show that these people have been stopped, but we're going to have to wait and see how that unravels. Kind of crazy. This isn't the first one that's happened either. It seems like there's a series of attacks that are happening where some different parts of America, people are just going up, shooting at the bases and retreating, which is insane that's not something that really has happened historically here in the west but it seems to be happening and then speaking of insane there's a massive protest in the capital of israel in tel aviv demanding a ceasefire deal with hamas i think everybody that is directly uh, either involved with this war or has people that are involved or, you know, bombs flying over and it's just everyone's fed up. Everyone's fed up. And over here, I mean, we're obviously funding it. We're giving a lot of money and resources to this. And I understand that, you know, they did this, they did that retaliation and fighting. But that's not how we achieve global peace. And with, you know, the advancement of nuclear technology, everyone is pretty much thinking the same thing. Who is going to launch the first nuke because America is going to be the last to do it and that's not going to be good. So all it takes is for one person somewhere in a country that has access to their own codes to say, boop, I'm hitting the button and then shit has hit the fan officially and nothing's going to save you. Really nothing except for beans, guns and ammo. That'll be kind of the new currency, but we're gonna have to wait and see how that plays out. Uh, in other news, right, like I said at the beginning of the video, Germany has suspended financial military aid to Ukraine, which is a pretty big development. And that's interesting because Canada is obviously very, very on good terms with Germany. And so I wonder how Canada is going to react to this, if maybe Canada is going to start pulling out of the military aid. And same thing with America. 
And then we have a bit of a bias here in the media with the American uh, American presidential candidate and the VP candidate, right? So J.D. Vance running under Trump has said that he wants to raise the child tax credit to $5,000. And CNBC said on like literally within days apart, here's why that could be difficult. And then Harris said she wants to call for $6,000 child tax credit. And there's not that same bias. Here's why that's difficult. That's more money. So very, very bizarre with the nitpicking that happens. But we all knew that. And that's why we don't really trust the mainstream media and why, I mean, this channel in particular, but all the other channels uh, that are like this have become extremely successful in criticizing mainstream media and the governments because it just doesn't make any sense. It's, it's a clear bias. Journalism, mainstream journalism has now become a platform for opinionated bullshit to just be pushed and people are really really fed up with it uh now switching over to canadian news bc is not in a good position i mean i suppose if you're a landlord but not if you're renting so bc landlords have recently taken it to court and they won that the ruling to increase rent by 23.5 percent over two years over two years. So people talk about rent control and how much it's needed. That's over 11% per year, which is insane. Absolutely insane. That is a higher interest yield than what the S&P 500 does historically 10% per year. BC landlords are bringing it up to 23.5% in two years. That is mind blowing. So if you're renting here at BC, just be mindful that if your rent does skyrocket, apparently it is legal. But of course, that's all part of the government's plan, right? Own nothing and somehow be happy. Very, very bizarre. Speaking of happiness, Justin Trudeau is sick. I did a video about this the other day. I'm not the only one that seems to think that he's sick. Uh, this person here says, what is wrong with Justin Trudeau? Am I, only, am I the only one that thinks he looks... Uh, that he's sick this isn't just aging where he's gone from you know a full face right here where you you know just standard stuff you got a neck you got you got a little bit of fat on your face that's normal to this where he's his jawline and the fat under his chin is just tucked in there where it, it doesn't really look that healthy it feels like he's lost a tremendous amount of weight which he wouldn't be the first liberal to lose a tremendous amount of weight you have marco mendicino who was really under the radar during the freedom convoy and after the freedom convoy for what he did to canadians took a bit of a leave of absence or he kind of hid in the shadows and he's right before the summer break he did start to reappear a little bit more and i mean he's gone down many many belt buckle loopholes right like he's lost a lot of weight and i mean i don't like the guy but it feels like his weight transformation looks a little bit healthier even though it's a significantly larger amount of weight that he's lost than justin trudeau justin trudeau doesn't look healthy right now and I don't know. I'll pass the question off to you. How do you feel about that? Have you noticed anything in uh, different with Justin Trudeau? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Next up, we have this article here that's saying that downtown Hamilton is not safe or healthy for business leaders. Kind of crazy that Hamilton is now becoming a absolute dump. Uh, let me know if you are affected by that. If you live around there or you live in Hamilton, is this true? Is it becoming a bit of a dump? Uh, and then we have this here, which, of course, some more alleged, alleged money laundering. Freeland has just announced 137 million stackaroo investment in the Canadian Growth Fund in a company that you never see their financials. And guess who is the CEO? <laughs> All right, this guy right here, Cloud, Cloud Le Tourneau. Previously, Cloud had held senior management roles with Canam Group Incorporated, SNC Lavlin Incorporated, S in freaking C Lavlin. Where, oh, where would we have ever heard that? And this is from Christia Freeland, Mr. Speaker, her official announcement on X. The Canada Growth Fund is investing 137 million stackaroos into a SNC Lovelin money laundering scam. Yep, 
more money that we just say bye bye to. Not not a very good look for Canada. And speaking of not a very good look for Canada, it seems like Canada's taking a bit of a bit of a playbook move here, copy and paste playbook move out of what's going on in the UK. People are being arrested, like actually arrested for what they are posting on social media, which is I guess at this point expected, like we've seen what's happening with the UK and here in Canada, we're going, Oh, we're next. We're next. Turns out we don't have to wait. It's already here. So RCMP has arrested a BC woman after racially offensive social media content takes a gulp as he's scared. All right, so let's take a look at this article here. A Chilliwack, BC woman has been arrested over what the police are describing as a racially offensive content she shared via social media. She was arrested on August 7th and has since been released to appear in court at a later date while prosecutors consider several possible recommended charges. And it's just crazy. Like, what? In, in this article, they go to say, and I'll just summarize. They go to say, we don't, we're not going to tell you who her who her name is. We're not telling you who what the social media handle is or what was said, which is crazy because who is deciding what is or isn't arrest worthy from your posts on social media? I get that there's a scale. I get that there's a scale of factual things such as there have been a certain demographic that have been caught pooping on beaches in Wasaga Beach. And we're going to be taking a look at that in a moment. That's a factual thing. It's not a racially motivated statement. It's just facts. And then you have the other side of the scale, which, of course, racist things can be said. Not about that particular example, but just in general, right? But who's deciding these things? And is it always going to be white people that are arrested? I don't know if this person's white. I have absolutely no idea. But it feels like that these racist claims are always made towards white people when it's become increasingly non-existent to be racist towards white people. It's not a thing, but only white people could be racist towards other races. And that line, that definition seems to change depending on the day, the time, climate change. I don't really know, but let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This feels like a slippery slope. I get it. Racist things. Yeah. Like, you know, social media companies have tools in place to block certain things that are said, you know, certain calls to action, certain keywords that you just can't say. I, I get that. That's a, that's a half decent policy. It works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it works a little too well for things that shouldn't really have to be censored, such as saying the coof. I can't even say the real word because that word is banned that has nothing to do with race but just an example of the censorship that does happen on this platform kind of crazy let me know what you guys think down below in the comments uh speaking of crazy now we're going to take a look at the senators where justin trudeau has appointed uh not one but two new senators uh but let's take a look at this video here that is resurfaced the the easy uh populist answers disingenuous uh solutions that both mr mulcair and mr harper are approving uh, uh, an elected senate or an abolished senate uh, are are just that disingenuous because they imply uh, protracted constitutional negotiation the the easy uh, popular <laughs> okay so hold on to that because that's going to be very important to take a look at in a few moments here so Justin Trudeau has appointed two more senators. That's 82 of the total 105 are almost 80% control. They are supposed to be independent, but they are uh, uh, all hardcore left wing. The Senate controls the ability to pass any bill from the House. Do you understand? And just to get a better idea of how insane this is, not too long ago, Justin Trudeau was criticized very, very heavily by the mainstream media for his partisan Senate picks. Yet here we are today with two new appointed senators and their partisan picks. Justin Trudeau promised Senate reform. I have come to believe that the Senate must be nonpartisan. Vowing back in 2014 to appoint independent senators. While a younger Pierre Polyev watched from the wings. But a CBC News analysis found eight out of 12 of the senators appointed last year have ties to the Liberal Party. That's 66 percent, up from about 30 percent in earlier years. 
I, Roger Kuzner, do so. Longtime Liberal MP Roger Kuzner became a senator last year. Senator, I am truly pleased to extend to you a very warm welcome to the Senate of Canada. Prompting critics to poke fun at the independent process. That the Prime Minister Trudeau has removed the fig leaf from his Senate appointments and is now openly appointing Liberal partisans to the upper chamber. Kuzner says he applied to the Senate to help Canadians. But other new senators also include longtime Liberal donors, former provincial candidates, and Liberal staffers. Justin Trudeau, he promised, um, an, quote, an independent Senate, but what has actually happened is the exact opposite of it. School, Conservative Senator school, Denise uh, Batters says the same. appointments were never truly nonpartisan. An independent advisory board recommends senators, but it's the Prime Minister who ultimately chooses. Now she suggests there's a reason Trudeau is nominating more Liberals. They're worried that uh, they're going to be in the losing position in the next election, and so they want to make sure that they have uh, as many senators, you know, filling those seats as possible, um, who are actually liberals. The trend has one academic who helped create the advisory board concerned. What is troubling is to see a slew of partisan appointments, particularly uh, those that match the government's stripes. The Prime Minister's office says there have been no recent changes in the way senators are appointed. The Conservatives haven't shared their position on whether they'd keep Trudeau's reforms if they win the next election or if they'd revert to an openly partisan process. Kate McKenna, CBC. So no matter, and this was in January of this year, so no matter what the press says, no matter how much time goes on, it seems like Justin Trudeau's goal, 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 goal is ultimately to have as much control as he possibly can, which, yes, that is a political strategy, but also hell to the no, man. We don't want that. That's absolutely insane. That's not a democracy. That's called uh, communism. Nobody's on board with that. People are didn't vote for that. They did not vote. And even with the NDP liberal coalition, that's not what people voted for. Somewhere along the lines, you had Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh. They individually had these promises that appealed to people in Canada. And there's a lot of buyer's remorse when it came to, to you know, as time has gone on for people that have voted. There might even be people that view this channel that have voted for Justin Trudeau in the last election or previous election, especially when it was towards pushing, you know, legalization of Mary Jane. That, yeah, I, I, a lot of people voted that for that and now they've since regretted it because those two have merged and that's not at all what people voted for. And even if, you know, Pierre Polyev were to, you know, this inevitable knock on wood, hopefully win this next election, even if he were to merge with like, you know, Bloc Québécois or something, it would have it would carry the same kind of weight for the controversy where people that vote for Pierre are wanting an independent conservative party and Pierre to be the leader they don't want this this merge to happen so it's super super bizarre that we're stuck in this in this kind of perpetual loop it seems until the next election which is why it's so important it's so important to get out and vote and be educated on this and I'm going to make a video at some point that's completely dedicated to how important and pivotal this next election is because I feel like there's just still so many people out there that are not really interested in voting. They're not making, you know, their, their informed decision is based off of only mainstream media's evidence, but that's a video for a different day. So don't worry too much about that, but keep your eyes peeled for when that comes. But I'd love to know what you guys think down below about what's happening here with the Senate. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know why. Next up, I took to X and I used an AI tool. I don't do that too often, but I think I might start doing this a little bit more and more. I asked AI this question here. I said, which race of people are pooping on beaches in Canada? And here's what it had to say. The issue of public defecation on beaches in Canada, particularly highlighted in Wasaga Beach, Ontario, has been associated with South Asian immigrants, predominantly those from India, according to various social media reports and discussions. And then it go, goes on to explain that there are social media reports and local testimonies. And for this reason, among other reasons, highly recommend you go over to X where you can find the link down in the description or just type in Mr. Sunshine Baby, MR Sunshine Baby on X and you will find me there. It'd be awesome to engage in a conversation over on that platform, uh, on that 
platform on that platform as well. But the reason I brought up the AI or I brought to the AI's attention and asked that question was because a article has just surfaced today uh, or yesterday rather about Wasaga Beach pooping by the Toronto Star. A serial pooping problem or dun, 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 something else. What's really behind the rumors about people defecating at Wasaga Beach? It might be the busiest summer season in 18 years of operation for Grandma's Beach Treats, a milestone measured in homemade butter tarts and scoops of ice cream headed out the front door with visitors drawn to the uh, to the sand two blocks away that just happens to be part of the longest freshwater beach in the world. This summer, Wasaga Beach has seen its highest number of tourists in a decade, with visitation rising to 20% above... Uh, even pre-pandemic levels. It's a welcome boom to the Ontario tourist town on the lip of uh, Georgian Bay, a beachside retreat that has staked its reputation on selling, as one town uh, official recently put it, family-friendly fun. But all of that comes to a bit of a creaching halt when you have these you know, pooping on beaches is pooping on beaches incidences happening so much so that the Ontario Premier Doug Ford has gone on mainstream media, television, and broadcast saying, "Hey guys, don't poop on beaches in Wasaga or just in general." And that clip has been played on American late night TV shows just to add more uh, exaggeration to the state of Canada. Not a very good look for our reputation. And also, why are people pooping on beaches? That doesn't even make any sense. There's bathrooms or poop at home or I don't know. Don't poop in the beach. It's kind of weird. I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. And now we're taking a look at the next potential massive pandemic, which a lot of people are saying, I'm not going to comply. No matter what, I'm not going to comply. A lot of people have already been saying that. I've posted, I believe, that question on my community tab here on YouTube, but also over on X. And it seems like the government and organizations, World Health Organizations, are already ready for this type of reaction. So it's... The rhetoric around this is, yeah, this is something that we have never seen above and beyond anything in the past. Let's take a look at some of these screenshots of these articles. You have MPOX detected in San Francisco water after the World Health Organization declares international public health emergency. That's not good. That's not a method of um, transmission that we have ever heard of. That was a bit of a curveball. All right, MPOX has been detected in wastewater samples from San Francisco. It was reported after the World Health Organization declared this a public emergency of international concern. Traces of the MPOX, so it's in California, sparkling concern that the disease could spread through the city and then the rest of America. Very, very crazy that this is now getting this much attention. And then you have this screenshot of an article saying Trudeau warns new virus worse than COVID set to disrupt banking, gasoline and food supply. So that is wild. And that is by the People's Voice TV. I'm not sure how <laughs> how legitimate that is. But nonetheless, it seems to be making its rounds. It's got almost half a million views on social media. And there are no community notes, as you can see. So, I mean, I suppose this was a real statement by Justin Trudeau, according to these articles. Kind of crazy. Justin Trudeau's Canadian government has issued very specific information about a future pandemic that they warn will come in three waves and it's set to disrupt access to banking, gasoline, and the food supply. So already you see that rhetoric is picking up and that's a massive, massive thing to say, especially after what we have been through collectively over the past what, four or five years. So I think time has just flown by. And then in addition to all those, you have another screenshot from the Mail Online News saying the Canadian government warns, uh, warns country to prepare for a new virus far worse than the COOF. Again, Unconfirmed reports since they are just screenshots of the articles, but every single one of these has, has not received a community note. So we're going to have to see how that unravels. By the time a post reaches 
almost half a million views. It should have already had a chance to go through the community note process. So it seems like it's all checking out. But again, we're going to have to wait and see. But here's a video of, uh, I think it's CBC here. Let's take a look at this. Spreading further and infecting thousands more each day. Mpox is being declared a public health emergency of international concern by the World Health Organization for the second time. The potential for further spread within Africa and beyond is very worrying. Now calling on the international community to help. It's clear that a coordinated international response is essential to stop these outbreaks and save lives. Mpox, formerly known as monkeypox, is a viral disease spread by close personal contact. That can cause lesions, fever, headaches. Most people recover, but there have been about 500 deaths in Africa so far this year. The outbreak began in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, one of the poorest countries in the world. A new, more transmissible and deadlier variant is now spreading, already to more than a dozen other countries. African health officials have already declared a continental emergency, saying they need up to 10 million vaccines, while also struggling to get doses they have to those who need them. This is a ticking bomb, so it's, it's kind of becoming the new HIV. Dr. Jean Nishiga is a researcher who's been working on MPOX. So if it's become the new HIV, then of course, if you're not, you know, touching other people and you just kind of keep to yourself and your, you know, <laughs> your partner, then there shouldn't inherently be a problem in terms of transmission. But with now it being in the water supply in San Francisco and it could potentially spread into America that way. And there's also been concerns that this might evolve into something airborne. Then if that even happens one time, you know, all of the headlines are going to be changing and we're all going to be masking up and going through the process that we've already done, but it's going to be even worse because they're going to try and nip it in the butt harder, faster than they did the first time. And I understand there's so many play on words with that one, but I'm just going to leave it there. Let's continue this video. All of a sudden, all the world uh, is paying attention. Um because of the threat of uh, uh, global spread. Uh, but this has been an endemic disease, a neglected disease. Two years ago, another strain of Mpox spread around the world, including Canada. Infections persist. Infectious disease experts say problems then remain today. There are vaccines available globally. There are therapeutics available globally. But due to logistical hurdles, regulatory hurdles, they're not deployed widely, especially in the most impacted areas of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Cam, those calls for international help you mentioned, what are Canadian officials saying about that? Well, so far the Canadian government has donated about $2 million to help deal with MPOX outbreaks across Africa to date this year. The Public Health Agency of Canada says it has not been formally asked by the WHO or anyone else for more help as of right now but that could change so it's monitoring the situation and assessing what kind of help it may be able to provide including donating vaccines public health agency of canada says it has enough vaccine on hand should the mpox outbreak go global like the last one did christine cameron mcintosh so it seems like we're preparing for something to get a little crazier and i'm going to go out on a limb and say that if we're already at this stage and there's still 30 days between now and when they sit down in Parliament, there is a high likelihood, if it stays consistent at this rate, that they come back wearing masks. And if they come back to Parliament wearing masks, then it's safe to say that shit will actually hit the fan and stock markets will likely tank, borders will get closed again, there will be mandates that go you know, nationwide, coast to coast to coast, and... I'm sure that that won't be met with a tremendous amount of, um, yeah, I don't know if people are going to comply is pretty much what I'm trying to say. But I'd love to know down in the comments, if that's the case, do you intend on complying? Let me know what you guys think. 
Next up, we're going to kind of wrap things up here with a couple other breakout stories across Canada. Tensions have escalated as Indian supporters faced off with Calistani, uh, Calistan separatists in an industrial area around Surrey on BC's uh, India's Independence Day. <laughs> And I did show this video in a previous video on this channel. I just wanted to highlight it again because it just feels like you have so many you know, problems that are happening from other parts of the world that they're being brought here in Canada and it's adding more divisiveness, which is insane. And that's, I really, I really hope that the next government, that the conservative government can really unite people instead of fueling this divisiveness. Uh, and then here we have this fella from the, he's the Coop Ontario president, Fred Hahn, uh, gave a, a brave heart speech sort of, at a rally that happened today. Let them hear us inside! Look who's gathered here today! People of every age! People who care about the environment! People who care about our healthcare system! People who work in our education system! I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sure it's about a very serious issue, but... <laughs> for you to have the same or a similar reaction that I do, just close your eyes, re-listen to that, and picture that it's about to be a Braveheart announcement, a strong man standing on a horse or pacing in front of, you know, a battalion of soldiers saying, we're gonna fight! And then that speech happens. And it just... It, 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 it made me chuckle, but I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. And then you have a lot of controversy around Justin Trudeau's hotel bill. So I did cover this the other day, and I said, look, in the article, it says that Justin Trudeau stayed at a lavish hotel. It's the Holiday Inn. That's insane. That doesn't make any sense. The, hotel, the Holiday Inn isn't lavish. When I said that, I didn't know that he ran up a bill of $650,000 and people's heads are spinning. How the hell does the prime minister rack up such a freaking insane bill? And the answer is... I don't think anybody really knows. Ask SNC Lavin. They might have some answers. But truth be told... It's because of Justin Trudeau's posse that follows him around, his security detail, right? So it's not just a hotel room for Justin Trudeau with security standing outside. They also need food. They also need accommodations and you need to block off certain rooms and, you know, they can't have like you or I wouldn't be able to get a hotel room, you know, even if it was just a coincidence next to Justin Trudeau's hotel room, that's a massive security risk from their end, from his end, from any prime minister's end. So what they do from what my understanding is they have a, you know, a, a perimeter set up that you and I don't have access to that blueprint, obviously for security reasons and no person, no civilian who doesn't have security clearance to be that close to Justin Trudeau will be able to get, you know, those hotel rooms. So they block off a massive chunk when they, when they stay at hotels like that. And then you add in, you know, food and all that stuff, but it, it's crazy that it would be so high. That's kind of where people's heads are spinning. That's look, I didn't explain it to defend Justin Trudeau, just know that when Trudeau goes anywhere, he also brings 30 minimum people, right? So anywhere that he's staying is going to rack up a significant bill. But you would think that that would stay in the like tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, bordering on close to a million dollars. Absolutely insane. And I'm very curious to know how this is going to look when Pierre Polyev has access to those funds. When Pierre Polyev, knock on wood is Canada's next prime minister when he's staying at a hotel and traveling. What's the workaround going to be? Cause it, you know, has every prime minister had this backlash? I haven't been paying attention to politics for that long. So I can't really say and speak on that, but that's more of a question to you, the audience. Have you ever noticed any prime minister that has had this much controversy for these hotel bills as much as Justin Trudeau or anywhere near as much as Justin Trudeau. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to be really, really honest. So I'm excited to see 
how Pierre navigates his way through all of these controversies that seem so difficult to to like not fall into, like Justin Trudeau, right? I'm not saying that it's not difficult to spend that amount of money. It feels like it would be common sense to not spend a million dollars on a hotel bill in Sudbury. But nonetheless, uh, it's interesting. Is Pierre going to like not sleep in a hotel? How's that going to look? Maybe in his camper van. Anyways, I'm just talking in circles, but I'm pretty excited to see Pierre just be prime minister for crying out loud and hopefully fix the country. Uh, next up, speaking of fixing the country, Ontario needs a little bit of fixing. So you have a insane storm that's happening. That's happening in Ontario right now. High winds, high amount of rain. This video doesn't do it justice, but this photo may do it justice. This is Mississauga, Ontario, a massive flood. And to wrap things up, this is a crazy video of what's happening in Mississauga right now. Thanks. Mississauga, in Canada. In Canada. So there's a lot of backlash that has followed this video surfacing, right? Who needs proper drainage anyway? Build, baby, build. Good thing Mississauga has saved $2 billion in development fees. And I'm sure the Liberal government is going to find a way to spin this on climate change. But we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out. Let me know down in the comments as we end this video. If you have any you know, comments, questions, or concerns about any of the topics that were covered. And on your way out, I would like to encourage you guys to smash like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And we will see you in the next one. Bye for now.